Welcome to UOIT's Teaching and Learning Center's teach tutorial on creating an assignment in Turnitin. This is one screencast in a series of teach tutorials designed to help you get started with Turnitin by creating a new assignment for your courses. So let's go and log in to Turnitin with our email address and password and click Sign In. As you know, once you sign in, you are offered the instructor home page. We want to move right on to the class home page. So I'm going to select a class here, and I'm going to select this class. And now I'm on the class home page. This is the page from which you can create assignments. So the step to create an assignment is move over to the right here where the new assignment button is, click on the button. You have four options in terms of the assignment type. Fortunately, you only have to choose one and it's set for you. You're going to choose a paper assignment. The other three assignment types are not subscribed to by UOIT. So just simply go to the next step, leaving it on paper assignment. In the next step, you're asked to give some information about the general nature of the assignment, and then you have an option to um, add more information about the assignment. We're going to do both through the one screen. So I'm going to give it an assignment title. The next box that asks for uh, input is the point value. Turn it in acts a, a little bit like a learning management system. So there are features of Turnitin that UOIT does not subscribe to since we have them within the WebCT management system. So I'm going to leave the point value blank. It's not needed. There are three dates to the right. The first date is the start date of the assignment, and I'm going to leave it as today's date. The second date is the due date of the assignment, and I'll leave it as, as it's set there. And the final date is the post date, a date that, again, we're not uh, interested in because we, we don't subscribe to some of the gradebook um, features of Turnitin. But I would recommend that you set this one date past the due date. So just as it's set here, um, you will need to change your start date and your due date and then put the post date one date after the due date. Before you click Submit, click the More Options button. You have several choices to make here, some of which involve whether or not you want the students to be able to see their assignment in Turnitin, look at the originality report, submit assignments after the due date, etc. I'll explain each as we go through. The first one is special instructions. These are instructions that you can give to your students ahead of the assignment. One instruction that you do want to give them, especially if you're going to allow them to see their originality report, which is the report that compares text in their paper to text in other papers, other resources on the internet, etc. If you're going to give them that option to look at it and then make a resubmission based on what they see, then what you need to tell them here is that a resubmitted paper will take up to 24 hours, or take at least 24 hours, for the uh, originality report to return. So it's not a bad idea to give them some uh, kind of like a heads up here and say, please allow 24 hours for resubmitted assignment reports to generate. That way they won't be checking every minute for it. The next option on the screen is whether you want to generate originality reports. Well, the originality report is the purpose of Turnitin, so I would guess the answer to that is yes. Now you have three options in terms of how you want these reports generated. The first option is immediately, meaning that the first report is final. Student uploads their assignment, the originality report shows, and there's no option for them to resubmit their assignment. That is the final report. The second one is to generate the originality report immediately, but they can overwrite reports up until the due date. 
This allows your students an opportunity to submit the assignment a couple of days in advance, look at the report, notice that perhaps they needed to paraphrase more and uh, in areas where they have been um, quoting without quote marks, uh, or there's areas where they realize that they have copied information and they should not have copied it. This gives them an opportunity to resubmit the, the um, assignment and get a new originality report. And the final option is to generate the originality report on the due date. I'm going to select immediately, but it can be overwritten um, until the due date. The next um, series of questions have to do with what Turnitin will use as a comparison to the paper. For example, the first one, exclude bibliographic materials from similarity index. The similarity index is the percentage of the paper that looks to be plagiarized. Remember, Turnitin does not detect plagiarism. It simply detects text that is similar. So in, in a re references page in a paper, uh, the actual references themselves, you don't need them to be compared to sources on the internet, or you will find that the similarity index goes much higher. So exclude biblio bibliographic material, yes. The next one is exclude quoted materials from the similarity index for all papers in the assignment. This means that anything that is within quotation marks will not be included in the search for similar text. This is up to you. Um, again, it will um, decrease the percentage of the similarity index if you say yes to this question. So I'm going to say yes, exclude quoted materials. As a side note, if uh, you're using APA or a um, format that requires uh, block um, quotes to not exist within quote marks, that will be checked against information on the uh, on the repository for Turnitin. So you can get away with some of the quoted material and you can't get away with some of the others. The next section has to do with excluding small matches and as a default this is set to no. Um, this is up to you again. If you have phrases in your course that are three, four, five, six maybe words, and you don't want those to always match to something, you could say yes. Exclude matches by a certain percentage or by a number of words. I typically say by a number of words because there are usually phrases that are, you know, four or five words in, in length that aren't plagiarism. There's simply no other way to rephrase it. The next step then is to decide whether or not you want your students to see the originality report. If you say no, then you will be the only one to see the originality report. If you say yes, then your students can see it. And depending how you answered the question here, the students can not only see it, but they could resubmit their paper with the corrected um, sections. The next one is if you're going to allow submissions after the due date. If you answer no, obviously by the due date, that's it. By saying yes, you can catch those stragglers and it will, they will be flagged as late anyway. Um, so that's an option up to you. The next one is whether you want to submit the papers to a standard paper repository or have no repository at all. If you choose no repository, the paper will not be added to the database that Turnitin keeps for sources of information to check. Uh, for similarity. By saying no, you exclude the possibility of two students copying the same assignment or copying a big portion of the same assignment. You exclude the opportunity to catch those. It's always a good idea to say standard paper repository, have Turnitin keep it in its database so that it can be used in future searches for a similar text. The next section I would leave exactly the way it is because you want it to search everywhere. You want it to search the student paper repository, which is what we just talked about, current and archived internet information, periodicals, journals, and publications. Those are all the things you want it to search. And the final option that you have is would you like to save these options as your defaults for future assignments? 
This is a really nice feature. By saying yes, the next time you go to create an assignment, all the decisions that you made the last time will have been um, selected. So I'm going to click Submit. And that's it. There's my assignment. It's all ready for me. I can always go in once the students have uploaded their assignments and view them. We'll cover that in the next tutorial. I can go in, edit those settings. So the settings that we just went through, you can go back and edit them at any point in time. I can submit a paper for a student, or I can delete the assignment if I've made a mistake or it's over and you don't want it anymore. And that concludes our tutorial on creating an assignment in Turnitin. Thank you for watching.